Have you ever wondered how electricians make all kinds of different lights everywhere be able to turn on and turn off without having to touch anything? So time clocks and photocells are two of a whole bunch of different devices and methods that we use out in the field to be able to allow lighting to come on at night, and then as the sun's coming up, maybe when people are coming into a store and it's still kind of dark out, we can have those lights come back on for a little while. And then once the sun's all the way up, they can shut back off. We have a little bit of control that we can do just using what we call automatic devices or automatic circuits. So an automatic circuit is basically something that just is self-sustaining. It manages itself comes on, goes off, you don't have to come up and turn a light switch on anywhere. Um, it has some kind of means of turning on and turning off all by itself. Make sure that you stick around to the end of the video because I'm actually gonna show you how to hook up photo cells and time clocks at the end of this. To start out, there's a whole bunch of different photo cells that you can come across. So like this is two of this pretty much the same thing. They're both 120 volt. Uh, rated. You might have some that are 208 rated or 277. So you have to be careful about what the rating of these are when you're ordering them. But essentially you'll notice there's black, white, and red, black, white, and red. So the black and the white you can kind of think of as the coil circuit, right? That's the incoming power that's going to power this device. And then the red is what your leg is. That's whatever's leaving that you're trying to get to turn on or turn off. Um, this is the same thing, same kind of wires. It's just that it gives you the option of having some movement. Sometimes when you're pointing these things, you like, it's hard to figure out where the sun's going to be at. And then if the sun's going up and then it's behind a building, it might be dark for this thing for a long time. So like so sometimes you just need a little bit more controllability. So having a knuckle style will do that. Then there's also the button styles, which I really like. Uh, I use that a lot for like demonstration purposes because it's really easy to blind them. You put your finger over it and the light almost immediately comes on. Next, we have time clocks. They all generally work off of an analog clock system. So typically you're running a 120 volt circuit in to power the clock, to just make the clock spin constantly. Uh, they have trippers on them. Some people will put one set of trippers. So there is an and on and and off or they will want an on and an off for the morning and an on and off for the evening. So they might have two on trippers and two off trippers. You can have different ratings with time clocks. You can have 120 volt, 208, 240, uh, but it just depends on what kind of use you need from them. Are you studying for your test to become a journeyman or a master or residential wireman? We have practice exams. They're online exams, they are timed. You also get the printable PDF versions of them. So click the link below for practice exams and start studying today. So let's talk about the dangers of working with automatic devices. If you are working on something that is off, but the timer is still going on this, every time that tripper comes to whatever time it's set on, it's gonna change the state of the circuit. So people have gotten shocked because they think something is off and then they don't realize like a certain time of day, you know, it's getting darker out and all of a sudden the photo cell kicks on. And now all of those pole lights that you have your hands in that you're working on energize. So when you're working with photo cells, when you're working with time clocks, always be cognizant of the fact that that's what you're working on and still go turn the breaker off. You ever wonder why some things don't have grounds on them? Like none of these photo cells have a green wire coming off, but then there's some things like this that do have a ground. There's even time clocks that are plastic that don't have any grounding. So that's the reason. If you have anything that has a conductive surface that I could put my hands on and get electrocuted because it's made of metal and metal's a conductor, you have to ground that. You have to hook a ground wire up to it. Anything that's plastic that doesn't have any way for you to get shocked doesn't have to have a ground wire. And it's actually in 250.4A2. It says grounding of electrical equipment. Normally non-current carrying conductive materials enclosing electrical conductors or equipment or forming part of such equipment shall be connected to earth so as to limit the voltage to ground on these materials. It is for things that are metal. If we put something that is not metal inside of a metal enclosure, we do have to ground the metal enclosure. But if it's in plastic and it's made of plastic, don't need a ground. 
Now let's look into how photo cells actually work. So photo cells always kind of like tripped me out a little bit when I was uh, starting in the trade because I would think of them as like a solar panel, but it's not the same thing. You can really think of these as just a contactor. It's essentially the same thing. You've got a main power circuit where we're running uh, just like a contactor is going to have a power circuit going into the top of it. And then we have a control circuit that is a completely separate circuit that allows the functioning of the device. And we have a control circuit in a photo cell as well, but the control circuit is the photons. So it's the photoresistor interacting with the photons. And as photons come in, there's a variable resistor inside of this thing called a photoresistor. And the more photons that come in, it changes the amount of resistance. No photons, it goes back to a different resistance. So it's constantly going to be changing its resistance to allow a switching device inside to open and close. So just like on a contactor, this control circuit will allow the opening of these or the closing of these, but it has, doesn't interact with the actual power circuit at all. Photocell does the same thing. So once we have photons that are coming in, we open the circuit. But when there's no more photons, it closes the circuit. So this is kind of like from the factory of photocells normally close. That's why a lot of times when you install a photocell brand new out of the package and you go turn power on, it's already in its closed state. So usually the light turns on right away. And then once the photocells start coming in, it changes its states and it turns off. And then, you know, at night again, when the resistance changes, uh, it'll close again and send power out to light. So that's how photocells work. Just kind of think of them as like a contact or a relay. It's just that the control circuit is the photons and the power circuit is the incoming wires that are hooked up to your black and white. Did you know that photocells and solar panels actually have a lot in common? They're both harnessing energy from photons that are coming from the sun. It's just with photocells, we're just using the photo part of it to open and close a switch. Whereas a solar panel, we're using it to power a load. So rather than having a generator that is creating the current motion inside of conductors, we're using solar power. We're using photons to create the movement of the current. So with solar panels, we actually want that current to drive a load to actually create a circuit for us that we can power equipment. But with a photo cell, all we're trying to do is open and close a switch. Now you know. All right, so now let me show you how these automatic components work in an automatic circuit. Um, I've got in front of me three different contactors, a manual switch, a photo cell, and a time clock. Now what I've done is I've run circuits. Uh, these top three are incoming home runs and I ran them out one to each one of the contactors. So I've got basically home runs going straight through the contactor and then I've got three conductors. One of them goes to this fan one goes to this light and one goes to this light. And then I have coil circuits. So each one of these contactors works because there's a coil that's being energized. So each one of the coils is wired to one of these devices. The first coil I've got uh, run over to a time clock. When the timer hits certain times, it will send power and energize this contactor. It'll close the contactor and it'll turn the fan on. And the second coil circuit goes into the photo cell, comes out and goes to this second coil and that will turn on this light. And the third one is just a manual switch. So time clocks, if we're gonna be controlling, say like parking lot lighting, this little time arrow is set to is whatever our current time is. And we can set these trippers and actually move them around and slide them to have an on time and an off time. One of these says on, one of them says off. And there's 120 volts going to the clock circuit on here. So we have a neutral and a hot, that is powering this clock and it's making the clock actually spin and work. And that way when we energize or when we hit uh, this, when this time tripper circulates and actually causes this thing to turn on and turn off, the clock's always working. It is always spinning. It's always got 120 volts. What's being switched is this leg right here. It's either being closed or it's being opened by the, the trippers. So a lot of times out in the field, we will override them. We'll go out and be like, oh, we wanna see if, all, if any of the parking lot lights are like not working. So we'll just come over and we'll manually turn it on. As you can see, when I do that, we have power to this coil. The actual home run is run straight to the contactor and run straight out. So this fan is working. You notice there's a little uh, button on the insides of these. So when you depress this button, it actually connects those two. So all the coil circuit is doing is, is creating a circuit 
that is uh, attached to an electromagnet. That electromagnet, when it is energized, will suck this side of the contactor to this side of the contactor. So it connects this lug to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one. Now, as the time goes on throughout the day, this might be a light uh, or a string of parking lot lights that are on right now. As this thing turns and the off time comes closer to here, once it hits a certain point, it shuts off the time clock. And then, you know, another eight or 10 hours go by and then it, the, the clock keeps spinning. And then the on tripper, it runs into this and pushes it back on. So that is how a time clock works. Next, we've got a photo cell. So photo cell essentially doing the same thing. It's just not using a mechanical spinning clock to do it. It's just using light. So photo cells work by uh, keeping things open when there are photons present in that eye. But when the photons go away, it closes the circuit. So if I were to blind this photo cell, you see that that light comes on. Introduce photons to it and it goes off. So this is another thing that, you know, out in the field, you need to be aware of that depending on what time of day that you're, you're working on or if there's any light source around um, where there's not a light source and there is a light source or something might change, you might run into a situation where all of a sudden you're energized and you're out and working out in the field. So I hope that helps you understand how we use time clocks and photo cells to make things turn on and turn off magically by themselves. There are lighting control systems and way more advanced stuff that we might get into in another video, but that gives you a general basis. Leave some comments below if you think we should do anything else, if you're more curious about certain things. Thank you so much for watching. Love you crazy people. And I'll see you in the next one.